Wow, you are beautiful. Look oh, at you. So, no, not really. It took a village, believe me. I got a lot of spackle going on here. But tell me about your, your trademark red hair, because at one point, you were actually told that your hair color was going to work against you. When I first moved to New York, I, I actually came here when I was 14 years old, and I was with from Eileen where, Ford. By the way? From Ohio. I'm, uh -huh. I'm an Ohio girl. And I was staying at Eileen Ford's house, and I went to her bedroom to tell her a story, and I put my hand on the wall. Well, you went to her bedroom to tell well, her a story? Well, my, because my, my bedroom was next to hers. I was staying in her house. Oh, right. She so used to have a lot was, of models live with yeah, her, right? Yes, I was staying with Christy Churlington. She was my roommate, and I was staying in just one bedroom over. So I walked just down the hall, put my hand on the, on the door, and I said, excuse me, Eileen. She walked straight up to me, smacked me on the hand, and I was like, she looked at me, she said, and besides, redheads don't sell. And so when my cover, been crushing, I, just... I looked at her and I said, Eileen, you want to bet? <laughs> and you show, you proved her wrong. And in fact, even to this day, people come up to you on the street and start playing with your hair <laughs> random, right? And say they want to take you to their hairdresser because they want your hair color. Well, I, you know, when I actually made that cover of Glamour magazine that you just showed, right. it was the highest seller of the year. So I sent it to Eileen saying, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I actually had a woman come up to me in the street and yank my hair apart and, be, and, and ask me, she was like, what color is your hair? And I said, it's natural. And she's like, it's natural by who? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, absolutely, it is absolutely gorgeous. But we should point out that, Angie, you're here not to talk about hair, although it's always fascinating, right, <laughs> ladies? But to actually talk about a health scare that you experienced last year. Tell, yes. tell us what happened. Um, in last May, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. And I basically had a shoulder pain and couldn't sleep. And I went to an osteopath to figure out what was wrong with my shoulder. And I couldn't figure it out. So, so, so we, I went in for an MRI. And they found a mass in my thyroid, and which, which is, I mean, when somebody tells you that you have cancer, it's, it's like telling you you have the plague. You know, you, it's, What's terrifying. it's so scary. And, and so I had a little pity party. I had one pity party for myself. I said, OK, I'm going to have a pity party, and then I'm going to fight this head on and be strong with it and, and have a good attitude, because I think how you how you reflect, how your thoughts reflect how you're going to be in life. Right, we just did a whole show on mind-body connection, and it can be very useful to, you know, have, be mentally um, in a good place as well. Absolutely. So you had surgery? I did. I had surgery, and thank goodness it didn't, it didn't spread. It was stage one. They got it. I'm cancer-free. I'm a cancer survivor. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. It's good. And obviously, one of the reasons you wanted to come is to, to raise awareness about this disease. And, you know, I just have a couple of facts, and that is, uh, you know, more than 95% of adults with this cancer survive at least 10 years. It is, it is very, um, the, the cure rate is excellent, we well, should point out. They say it's the best cancer to get. I mean, if there is a cancer that... That but thyroid cancer is the best cancer, and it and it saves off other ca other cancers. So if you get thyroid cancer, you probably most likely won't get any other cancers. So I'm, you know, knock on wood. Yeah, <laughs> and we should mention that some of the the uh, symptoms are neck lumps, chronic cough, hoarseness, problems swallowing, or actual pain in your neck. And the right. treatment options include hormone treatment, chemotherapy, uh, radiation, iodine therapy, and external radiation therapy. Are you still on medication for this? I have to take medication every single day of my life. I have, I take an armor thyroid. I couldn't take, the, they give you several different types of, of medication afterwards. And you kind of have to figure out what your cocktail is. And what, you know, because when they first gave it to me, I was having narcolepsy. I was falling asleep at stoplights. And well, that's very <clears throat> dangerous. Yes, no, yeah. it was awful. And so they had to keep upping the level and upping the level. And now, and, and then my hair started to fall out. Oh, no. Yeah, so <laughs> big clumps of my hair started to fall out, so they had to lower my level. So now we're hoping, I'm hoping that this is going to be a good, a good level that I'm on now. But you're feeling, <laughs> you're feeling good. I feel great. And I know it hasn't slowed you, da slowed you down. You've been in a number of movies, as I mentioned. And you've got a new movie coming out called The Wedding Pact. Yes. We have a clip. Let's take a look. Okay. Who is she and what's her name? Elizabeth. Uh, I haven't seen her since college. And we made this pact back then that if we weren't married in 10 years, we were going to marry each other. So here it is 10 years later, and uh, I'm going to track her down. You made the old friend, college, 
ten-year pact? Sounds kind of dumb when you say it like that. <laughs> no, it is kind of dumb. <laughs> you play kind of a Mrs. Robinson type, yeah. right? Well, so, I'm basically trying to seduce him there. <laughs> yeah, and, and so you must obviously, you're, you enjoy acting a lot and want to do more of it. I do. I've, to date, done 50 movies. Wow, that's amazing. You've got also, you, I, I should mention, you have a little four-year-old, right? Thank you. And I have so, a son named Caden. And, and, and how was he doing with, with you being sick and all that? Look at him. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's a sweetheart. <laughs> I love him so much. You know, I said to him, he, I told him, I said, you know, Mommy has a boo-boo in my throat. And he, he was like, you have a boo-boo? And he would, so now when he sees my scar, he's always kissing my scar. Aww. Saying it's, I'll make That's it so all sweet. better, Mommy. And before we go, Angie, I have to ask you, because you, you really dated some interesting people. <laughs> uh, Angie has dated Howard Stern, Joe Pesci, and Sylvester Stallone. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have uh, anybody special in your life now? I am... I, you know, I'm probably really in love for the very first time in my life. Oh, that's so nice. And I'm dating a, a guy named Carl Farrow, and he's gorgeous. And he's so sweet to me. And that's him. There's I Carl. Love him. Oh, that's great. Well, good luck with, with Carl. Thank good you. luck with, and, and continued good health. Thank and you. And good luck with your continuing movie career as well, Angie. Thank you so much for coming by to say hi.